All right, in this video, we're going to talk about image histograms. Start off by saying, what is image histograms? Why do we need it? How does it work? And then go into three coding examples, one with a gray color, and then histogram of a region. Okay, so by the end of this video, we'll see how we can interpret an image like this of a cat into a graph like this on the right here. Okay, so what is an uh, image histogram? Uh, image histogram shows the distribution of pixel intensity. So you can see we have pixel intensities on the x-axis and number of pixels on the y-axis. And here we have the three colors of the three different channels. So why do we need image histogram? There's a lot of applications. One is for thresholding, could be for equalization and enhancement of images. Could do different things like color analysis or even some color segmentation if the peaks are in uh, very different places. So how does image histogram work? So the simple idea is you count the number of pixels for each pixel intensity. So here we have 0 all the way up to 255 as our max. And so for every pixel from 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 255, we count how many times this pixel value shows up and then we just mark it. So here you could look at this graph and see um, the blue is the winner with the most counts around, if we draw down around 200 something for pixel intensity. Okay, so that's how the histogram works. So let's go right into the coding. Okay, so as usual, we're gonna import some of the things that we'll need, our common modules. So we have our import CV2 as CV import numpy as mp, import matplotlib.py pi plot as plt, and then um, import os to read our files. So we're going to have our first first function called gray histogram. So usually we want to just look at the gray sometimes because it's um, we're only dealing with one channel, so that that saves us some time, and sometimes one channel is enough for us. So it's going to be case by case. But here we're going to go ahead and read in our file. So we have root equals os.getcwd, and then we have our image path, and that's going to be os.path.join, and we have our root, and our file is in the folder demo images and then it's called qpic1.jpg. Okay, so inside here we have our image equals cv.umread and then we're going to pass in image path and we're going to read it in as a gray image. So umread grayscale. Okay, so now if I go ahead and plot this plt.figure and then plt.umshow and we're using the matplotlib, so um, we have our cmap here equals gray. So this will plot our image in gray, okay? So if I do a plt.show, we could see our cat image here. Okay, that's our cat image. And now if we want to do some histogram plotting, we could use the histogram function. We'll create a variable called hist and then set that equal to cv.calc hist. And then what you want to do is pass in, it's weird, it has to be a list of your image because perhaps you may have more than one. And then you have your channel. So with only grayscale, we have one channel. Um, the mask we won't use. And then 256, later we'll talk about um, I personally don't use the mask because there's an easier way to do it, which we'll show you later on at the end. Um, here we also have the range of values, which will be 0 to 56, and it's not including 256. That's why um, pixels is from 2 to 255, not including 256. Um, that's why we have the number 256 here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do some plt.figure for a new figure, and then plt.plot to plot our histogram. And then we'll label our x axis as bins. And then we will label our y axis as number of pixels. Okay, so if I plot this, I should see my histogram plot in grayscale. And voila, we see that. Most of our values are around the 200, which corresponds to probably the bright background and this white, the floor is white, this band is white. So 
we have a lot of high intensity values, which shows that there's a lot of close to white values in this image. Okay, so that's one interpretation of this. And maybe sometimes you would want to look at a color histogram instead. So I could do def color. I'm going to call this his def color histogram. And then inside of here, we're going to do some um, reading as we did before. And then once we read the image, we want to, um, here is a different part. So we don't want this to be grayscale anymore. But what we want is to convert it to RGB. So we're going to do cv.cvt color and then pass in our image. And we have our cv.color. And it's going to be called color uh, bgr to rgb. Okay, that will convert it to rgb. And then we have our plt.figure. We're going to go ahead and plot it, plt.umshow. And we have our RGB image. So plt.show will show the image. And if I run this, we should see our color kitty. But first, of course, I need to comment this out and then call our new function. And I need to close these uh, figures. And then if I run it again, we should see our color image show up. So that's all working. So now what I want to do is get our histogram for our color channel. So I'm going to define a color list called colors and then label this B, G, and then R. Okay, so I'm going to put some stuff in a for loop. So for I in range, in range the length of colors, and you could do it a Pythonic way if you want, but I'm going to do it this way. So cv.calc hist. So I'm going to calculate my histogram, and it's going to take the same inputs as we did up here. So I'm not going to rewrite it. The only difference here now is instead of image, we call this image RGB. Okay, so now we're going to plot it. So plt.plot, and we have our his colors, and then I. Afterwards, we're going to do um, our label. Our labels will be the same. So I'm just going to copy this. So now we have our labels. So if I were to run this, let's see. I think, yeah, I need to create a new figure right here. So plt.figure. And this should actually be pixel intensity. That would make a little bit more sense instead of bins. Okay, so if I run this, we should see our three channels show up. Okay, so let's see, we have his colors, colors I. Okay, so I actually want this index here to be I so that um, it'll correspond to the different channels. Okay, so I'm going to update that and then run it again. But I need to first close this. So if I run it, now we see our three channels. Okay, so that's what we're expecting. So what this tells us is that this image here could actually be represented by this on the right. And we can see that the red values have a lower peak, the blue values have the higher peak. Um, and not just that, you can see that the red is lower in pixel intensity to the peak and the blue is higher in pixel intensities. So that tells us a little bit about the distributions. And we also see here, if we zoom in, there's some um, local peaks. So um, that may tell us some information too, if we were to look into that. Okay. So next up is we're going to do some segmentation of a region. So region might be helpful if we want to zoom in to somewhere and then see what's going on. So here, if I look at my image again, let's say if we wanted to zoom in to a special region. So maybe here in the 600 to 800s 
we want to see a distribution of this little logo here. So what we want to do is um, let's go ahead and replicate this. So we're going to call this uh, histogram uh, region. I'm going to comment this out and then call our new function histogram region. So the main difference now is that all we got to do is um, instead of using a mask, um, what I prefer is just to truncate our image into a new section. So here we're just going to go ahead and get part of the image. So I define six, 675 to 825 and then 600 to 800. Okay, so if I go ahead and run this, we'll see what this is doing. We're getting a region of this, and you can see the peaks are a little bit shifted, a little bit higher. Okay, so this might be some useful information, and you could choose these values wherever you want based on where you want to zoom into your image and see what's happening locally. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.